how you like got started your enthusiasm with nutrition okay. and what like kind of got you into it and then how you found out about my work okay. and how that intermingled and like blended with what you were thinking of and you were doing. Okay, so growing up in the 60s and 70s, I, I was born and raised in a town called Grand Forks, North Dakota. And uh, my parents always had gardens, things like that. So, but back then, you remember, we didn't have many labels on food and, and different items like that. So I didn't really know much about nutrition other than what my mom would make most of our food from scratch. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, so going through grade school, high school, very active person. I played a lot of sports, multi-sports, and then also did a lot of hunting and fishing outside a lot. But my grandfather always uh, instilled in my head that I needed to get a college education. And so I didn't think much about it. So, but I wanted to play sports in college. So I went off to play hockey Mm -hmm. in college. And when I got there, I had to figure out what I had a, I was going to study. I never really thought much about it. And so when I showed up, I started looking at the catalog of classes being offered. And I thought, well, here's a class called Food for Fitness and the Food Selection and Preparation Techniques. And I thought, well, maybe there's a connection. Maybe I could be a better athlete if I knew a little bit more about food. And you know, you know when you when you move away from home, you, I, may, I could basic, basically make an egg sandwich mm. and, and things like that. So mm. I didn't really know a lot about food preparation other than just kind of instinctively doing things. So then I took that, that new, those two nutrition classes. One was basically on intro to nutrition. The other one was about how to uh, select and prepare food. And I knew by the end of that quarter that that was going to be my field of study. Wow. So, okay, so college got you interested in it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, b back in growing up in 60s and 70s, this is the mid 80s going to college and there wasn't a lot of talk. You know, you couldn't pick up a magazine and read about nutrition and things like that. And I, I didn't know anything about nutrition and uh, made a lot of little Debbies <laughs> and those types of things. Well, and, when did you go to like kind of move towards a plant-based diet? Well, because so, that was before you met me, of course. Yes, before. it was. Yeah. And so I went all the way through my four-year degree in dietetics mm -hmm. at North Dakota State University. And, you know, the, the emphasis there was just get the right proportion of your macronutrients. Mm -hmm. You just, if you're an athlete, do a little more like 60 to 70%, just yeah. shift that pie around. Yeah. And so, but with that dietetics education, I needed to do a medical internship. And I got computer, computer match to the University of Nebraska. So I went down to the University of Nebraska to do my dietetic internship and to do graduate school. And I got all the way through there and finished up my internship at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and got hired on as a clinical dietitian there. And during that time, I was, I was asking myself, okay, what am I going to do for a permanent career? What am I going to tell my patients? Is it, is it, is it you know, the, the high carb or is it the low carb? Is it the high fat? That was Atkins was big at the time. Yeah. And at that point, I said, you know what? I'm going to, I was doing a lot of different studies and different things like that. I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to eliminate all processed food. And I'm going to, and I just kind of went and I looked at these different things. And some people were giving me different things. They're saying, Oh, the book of Genesis from the Bible has this stuff about just eat plants and stuff like that. And I said, okay, I'm going to wipe the slate clean and I'm going to go to point zero and just go 100% plants. And then I'll do that for a month. And then I'll slowly add skinless, boneless chicken back in, skim milk, and all these things that I was told that would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. So after 30 days of my experiment of total plants, no processed food, I felt fantastic. I didn't have any health issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just felt so fantastic. I said, how about another 30 days? And then I, I'm still on a 30-day plan. I'm still going, here we are, 32 years later. Yeah, but you could have felt good eating meat. And that way, just feeling good would make you, because people could feel good temporarily. That's right. That's eating any right. kind of junk. Okay. You know, so, so, I mean, well, so then I said, okay, let me like want to reinforce it with some background. That's right. So then mm. I started diving in and I started looking at what research is out there. Yeah. And then at that time, Ornish was still, was for, just coming out. Yeah. So I started taking his materials and saying, okay, there's scientific basis for this. It's there. It was just buried. Yeah, sure. We never studied it in college. Right. And so I started diving into it. And then through that process, uh, I, I started a, a, a drive and I wanted to be, um, I wanted to offer people a different option mm -hmm. to eat out. So I got a business partner who is now my wife and we started a total plant-based restaurant in Grand Forks, <laughs> Grand Forks, North Dakota. Like it's not the Mecca. Right. Of, of plant-based eating. So who would think there would be, not, be not, not even many customers there, people come in your restaurant. So well, an, see, an empty <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> That's right. But people wanted, you know what people wanted? They wanted food from scratch. 
Yeah. And that's what our food is. We made our own ketchup. We made our own mayonnaise, our own mustard. Really? And so we did that. And I started seeing that. I started reading other studies. And then I started looking at the buried studies. You know, yeah. there's a lot of studies out there yeah. that were already in place. And so we did that. And we had a, we had a light. We had an experience uh, that was priceless. We closed up that shop. We had a health food store, a restaurant, and was really not doing that well. And we weren't mm -hmm. the best business people. Mm -hmm. We went and worked at a health retreat. And when I was at your Eat to Live retreat today, mm -hmm. same principles here where we could take people out of their homes and then immerse them into a nutrient-dense, plant-rich diet. Mm -hmm. And we, we thought we were seeing miracles taking place there. Where the real miracle is, is could these people continue to live this way when they went home? Right. And so I got the bug there. We would put on seminars and cooking classes in our restaurants. And then when we went to this retreat center, I said, wow, this is great. How about now I go teach at a college and uh, teach these principles? Okay. It took a few years because then we did another restaurant in Rapid City. So we had our second restaurant, mm -hmm. bakery, health food store. And this, but I had the bug for teaching. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could go and teach if I could, instead of doing seminars, how, what would it be like if I could take young adults through a four-year plan and teach them the true principles of good nutrition? And did you go back to school to get your PhD? Okay, at so point? at that point, I, I, was, uh, I was registered dietitian with a master's degree. And I knew that for longevity and purposes of education, I probably need to get a doctorate. Right. So I, I, I finished my doctorate degree in public health because right. I wanted to find out uh, there's a there's a field within public health called implementation science. What's the best way and the principles to use when you're doing intervention, what we call interventions. Right. <laughs> and so it was during that time that I discovered your work. Okay. So when I went to, I got my first uh, teaching position before I was done with my doctorate, I was still working on my doctorate, started teaching at a small college, Shadron State College in rural Nebraska. It was at that point I discovered your materials. And even up till that point, all this fighting going on with carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly realized I was reading your materials and it made so much sense to me that if you start looking at the micronutrient density of the food, that the macros take care of themselves. Right. And so that's when I started using your materials in my classroom at Shadron State, my intro to nutrition. Well, before you even went to NAU, you were? Yes, yes. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so back in like 2005, 2006, Mm -hmm. And you know what we would do for, for a class project in my intro to nutrition class at Shadron State College, I would have the students go out and do a health fair for elementary students. And I found your Andy scores, the aggregate nutrient density scores. Mm -hmm. And we made charts out of them and we handed them out to, to elementary students, mm -hmm. first through fifth grade. And we would give them to them and we'd say, do you, how many points do you get a day of your, your micronutrients? So they thought, well, let's let's saturate those tissues <laughs> early on mm -hmm. so we can prevent uh, all these other issues, these lifestyle related diseases. And so my students would go out and they would they would do a little quiz with the students and they do a little cooking demo and different things. They go around to these different stations in the grade school gym and then they'd hand out the uh, the micronutrient density chart and tell them, OK, now go put this in your fridge at home and see if your, your family can get 500 to 1000 points a day. Of, of high nutrient food. Of the high nutrient, the, the Andy mm. scores. Wow, that's so cool. So then uh, I, I applied for a position at Northern Arizona University. I wanted to go there as an undergrad, mm -hmm. but really like the, the Flagstaff area, the mountainous region. So when I got there, um, I was already familiar with your work. And I was, I was thinking I, I should be doing a research study with these Andy scores. Mm -hmm. And I thought the best, the best place to do that would be with the uh, employees, worksite wellness. Because you know how it is when you when you work in a in a, a setting where you go to meetings and people are bringing all kinds of processed foods and things like that. I thought mm -hmm. the way to infiltrate the camp, so to speak, would be to uh, work with the employees so we could change what we're eating at work. And that was one of the first studies that we worked together on. Yes. And so, and then did you contact, how did you, we worked together, you contacted me? Well, <laughs> or did I contact you? Yes, I don't even yeah. remember. Yeah. So yeah. it was a Friday afternoon in mm -hmm. like 2015. Mm -hmm. 2016 or some, somewhere in 2015 and on a Friday afternoon mm -hmm. I got on I got on your website and I looked at uh, contact push the contact button and I said I'd like to use your materials I want I want permission to use your materials for a research study I want to do with the employees at NAU I got it okay 
So I, I, sh I shot it off to your website thinking, I'll never hear from you, <laughs> from your people. I right. thought it would just kind of go into cyberspace and it would disappear. By that Sunday, you personally had gotten a hold of the email and contacted me. Right. And you said, let's, 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 let's talk. Let's, at the time you said, let's Skype. Let's Skype. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we Skyped and I, at that point had a graduate student who was getting a, a master's degree in uh, health psychology. And we had an undergraduate student who were, had been talking to me prior to this, like, hey, I want to be involved in research. Do you mm -hmm. have anything going on? I said, well, I'm, I'm cooking one up. I'm mm -hmm. cooking a study up. And you said, okay. Um, by the end of that call, that Skype call we had that week, you said, I'll tell you what, we're going to do an immersion. We'll come out and do a Dr. Furman immersion. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we'll do a six. For the employees. For right. the employees, yep. yeah, yeah. We'll right. do an immersion specifically for the employees. Right. And then you said, okay, then we'll do a, we'll a two-year study. <laughs> and then I whittled you down to a one-year study. Mm -hmm. And then I got you down to, let's just do a six-week study since this is, our, this is like our first professional date. 